Hey everybody, uh, we're doing a new series now. It's gonna be different techniques, how-tos uh, with different baits. Basically, what you need as a beginner musky fisherman. Um, we're gonna cover bucktails, top water, crank baits, glide baits, jerk baits, do a segment on trolling, uh, do a segment on electronics. I'm going to actually factory reset my graph and we're gonna walk through how to set it up, what settings I use and what works best for me. Um, something different that we're going to do on this is a trolling segment of planer boards, just all kinds of different things to show um, what you need to do for a beginner musky fisherman and maybe some different tips and techniques for, you know, seasoned anglers. You know, maybe uh, I'll give you a tip that you haven't heard of or thought about and hopefully it'll help you out. But for today, we're going to talk about release tools. What I have here is called a hook pick. And this is a valuable tool a lot of people don't use. And what it does is if you've got a fish hooked deep in the mouth, you can slide this down in there. And because of its length, your hand's safely away from the teeth. You can hook, grab a hold of the hook, the split ring, uh, whatever you can get a hold of. And you can actually work on it to get it out in the standpoint of uh, your long pliers can't get in there and get it. So you can actually kind of snag the hook and pull it out. So that's a hook pick. Um, you can get uh, all these products too at muskytackleonline.com. Um, I'll put a link there in the description. But yeah, this is a hook pick. Pretty simple tool. Uh, just got a little S hook on the end. So let's move on to the next one. Next, we have long needle nose pliers. I see a lot of guys that have the short needle nose and the issue with that is you're in the danger zone. With these longer pliers, you can keep your hands back away from the fish's mouth, grab the hook, get it out of there, get the fish released. Um, you don't need like snap on or anything like that. Nothing super high quality. These are like six dollars. Um, I got a couple pairs of them just in case I drop them or something happens. So that way I've always got tools in the boat. You know, with releasing this fish, keeping your hands back is a good good idea. You know, they got a lot of razor sharp teeth, and they're not afraid to use them. You know, pliers are cheap, especially these long ones. Like I said, five or six bucks. Stitches are not cheap. Hospital bills aren't cheap, you know, so that's something to kind of think about there. So we got our needle nose pliers. Now, you want to get in there, but the fish keeps chomping and biting and keeping its mouth closed. So you go with some jaw spreaders. What you do is you slide these in, they open up, kind of keep the fish's mouth opened up and uh, allow you to get in there and work. The thing with these, though, they're not, you know, rated for you know, like Mako sharks or anything like that. So the thing that you can uh, do, I tie a rope to mine and kind of tie it off to the boat. That way I don't lose them. Um, but what they're designed for is just to kind of keep a little tension on the fish's mouth. You know, obviously two fingers there, you know, I'm squeezing it. They can still get their mouth shut, but it kind of is a, almost like a deterrent, you know, because you put it in the mouth, boom, opens them up. It's not going to open them full, you know, to where the fish is locked their jaw open, you know. This is a, a pretty good design because just like hooks, if you have this in the fish's mouth and say it gets out of the net, gets free, you don't have this tied off and the fish swims off, the fish can shake this like it does a hook. Uh, it's not going to be easy for them, but they can get it out of their mouth. So that's something to think about too, you know, when it comes to the safety of the fish. So that's your jaw spreader. <clears throat> then we go into our hook cutters. We got a couple different types here. These are the Nipex. These are kind of your high end cutters. The plus with these, they always work and they always, always cut hooks. These are your lower end. Um, you can get these at like Home Depot, Lowe's, and um, they're pretty good. They've got a little bit of a leverage action to them. They cut hooks. Um, there's nothing wrong with them. They're just not, in my opinion, as reliable as the Nipex. So again, you know, I keep a couple of pairs in here. Definitely tie you a little rope to them so that way if you know you are you know reaching down to cut hooks you know you've got something so if you drop it whatever the fish thrashes and you move real quick it just dangles by your wrist i lost three pairs of these last year and they're anywhere from 50 to 60 dollars and i lost all three pairs from not having this rope on you know you'd figure i'd have learned that lesson pretty quick but i apparently like to learn things the hard way um the third pair that i lost actually was standing kind of like this and tying the rope to it, you know, so that way I wouldn't do it, but I was on the water and I dropped it, boom, hit the edge of the boat, in the water they went. 
gone. I was a little upset, but I learned that lesson and now I tie all my ropes on them at home or at the boat ramp. So those are your Nipex cutting tools. Um, hooks are very cheap. These fish are not. Uh, talk to your biologist, talk to the DNR, find out what it actually costs to stock a muskie in your state. And you'll realize that if it's gonna take any time at all to get the hooks out with your pliers or anything like that, just go in and start cutting them. So yeah, like I said, if it's gonna take any time at all, just go in, cut the hooks, get the fish back in the water. Um, so yeah, Nipex, those are your cutting tools. <coughs> now, you've got your fish, you got it in your net. Let's talk about our net. This is the Frable Big Kahuna. This thing is huge. It's, uh, I believe, 44 by 40 or 40 by 44. I can't remember which way. Something like that. I'll post a graphic up here, uh, or text, rather, of the dimensions of this net. This is a large net. I think, if memory serves, this is the largest landing net on the market. Uh, the cool thing with this, it's got a knotless mesh, so that kind of helps keeping your hooks from getting tangled. It's got a pretty good coating on it, and that um, keeps you from removing slime on the fish. Where that comes into play, if you remove the slime of a muskie, that's kind of its, uh, its protection under the water. So when you remove it, they can actually get infections and diseases, and that'll cause them to die, and we don't want that. So get yourself a decent uh, net, something with a coating, you know, of a higher quality. Various brands are out there. Um, I just happen to like this one. It's probably a little overkill where I fish in Illinois, but I do travel to like Minnesota and Wisconsin to fish. Um, but here in Illinois, it's kind of overkill because we're definitely not the land of the giants. But as you see, you've got a lot of room in that. So this is kind of my holding pen for the fish. So I catch the fish, I got them in the net. You know, if I want to unhook them, I just slide this over, get it where I want. You can wrap it, um, wrap it up in one of your down rod holders like I just did. It was not intentional, but it worked. And you've got your fish in here swimming around. Even a 40, 50 inch fish has got plenty of room to move. If it's way out there and you're trying to get it, just grab the bag, start working it towards you, reach down, grab the fish. There you go. So like I was saying, you've done your, you've used your tools, you've got the fish unhooked, it's in your net. So now you lift it out of the net. <coughs> And what you do with that, you just lift them straight up, immediately go into a horizontal hold, no verticals. The bigger the fish, the more pressure that puts on their jaw and their gill cover, which is typically what you hold it by. That can cause damage to the fish. We don't want to do that. So as little time as possible in the vertical hold, you know, pull it up, bend at your knees, kind of turn and hold the fish. I'll get you a few pictures. Keep the fish out of the water no longer than you can comfortably hold your breath. If you can hold your breath for five, 10 minutes, that's too long. With today's cameras, you can get tons of pictures in just a couple of seconds. It's unbelievable the speed on these cameras these days. So now you've got your pictures. You wanna see how big this fish is, right? Everybody does. Get yourself a bump board. <coughs> you can fold these out. This bump board and the majority of them measure up to 60 inches and you just slide your bottom jaw on this end, straighten the fish out, pinch the tail over, read your measurement, and you're good to go. <laughs> okay, so you're, you're ready to measure your fish. Let's say you don't wanna bring the fish out of the water and in the boat. You go from your net, you do your pictures, and you wanna get it back in the water. You can measure with your bump board in the water. Check this out. This thing floats. So you stick it in, put the fish on it, get your measurement, and you're good to go. Once you're done with that, you can also do a quick rinse, wipe down, clean your board off, shake it, let it air dry, use a microfiber towel, whatever you want. This is the proper measuring tool for a muskie. Do not lay it on the carpet of your boat and get a little tape measured out and measure it. Um, do not use one of the, they call it, I guess they're typically for bass and walleye, the little Rapala fold down ones that are about that wide. That's no good. You want something wide, maybe even wider than this. There's various brands of these out there um, that you can put the fish on. They're made of like a PVC type material. It won't remove any slime. You're good to go. You know, again, if you bring the fish in the boat on the carpet to measure it, you're losing slime on the fish and you don't want that. <coughs> so now at this point, we've covered all of our release tools. 
So now you're set up and ready to go. You don't ever want to go out and target these fish without having these things in your boat ready to go. Hook cutters, you might think, oh, I don't need hook cutters. What if you get in a situation where the fish is hooked deep and you can't get it out with pliers? Now what? So you're able to get in there and cut hooks. And that's where your jaw spreader comes in place because the hook cutters, compared to the length of your needle nose, are relatively short. So you might end up getting down in the danger zone. That's where your jaw spreader comes in place <coughs> is it'll keep the fish's mouth relatively securely open. You can get in there and cut hooks. So just keep these things in mind. When you get out on the water, do, you know, use your best judgment. Do uh, whatever you can to, you know, protect the resource and get the fish back in the water with a healthy release. So up next on the video series, we're going to have uh, probably a bucktail demonstration coming up. Um, we're going to talk about the different types, different sizes, uh, triggering techniques for when you're casting and retrieving to try and catch fish. And uh, then we'll, you know, start progressing in the series. I don't know how many parts it's going to be at this point, um, but I think it's going to be cool. It's something different. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with your friends. There's uh, links in the description to where you can pick up some of these products that you guys seen in the video today. And uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next one.